The scandal led to a major rethink on the regulation surrounding pensions policy. It woke up the government to the inadequacy of the regulations surrounding um, occupational pension schemes. And the upshot was that in 1995 there was a Pensions Act that introduced a statutory office to oversee the regulation of pension schemes. Like most regulators, the pensions regulator was more concerned with solving problems from the past rather than the much harder task of predicting problems in the future. Regulation um, reacts to developments. All right, you can say it's, it's shutting the stable door after the horse has bolted, but at least it protects the, the people who come after. However, new regulations can also have unintended consequences. What that 95 Act did was it brought in what was called a minimum funding requirement and essentially said that pension schemes had to look at what would happen if they had to wind up the scheme today. What could they get for their assets? Designed to increase the security of members whose pension schemes closed down, the knock-on effect was potentially a more conservative investment strategy. This really changed the whole basis of the way in which pension schemes were funded. This idea of measuring the value of your assets, not in terms of the flow of money they may produce over time, but actually um, what they would fetch if you had to sell them in the market today, a system called mark to market, that is now required by accounting rules. You're introducing tremendous volatility into the way pension schemes are run and the impact on the company itself on whether it's going to have a deficit in the pension scheme one day, a surplus the next day, a deficit the next. That's having a real impact on businesses. The next great pension shock was at Equitable Life. The company promised its policyholders guaranteed returns, which ultimately proved impossible to meet. Many thousands of policyholders died without receiving their promised pensions, and those still living wait in hope. It was a disaster because I was with Equitable Life. A lot of money was lost then, a lot of money. We'd planned to sell the big house that we had and uh, wind down together, you know, have more holidays and relax and enjoy the grandchildren and help our children. And, uh, I feel quite upset that I've not been able to do that. I just don't trust these people that run the country now. That I've found this last 10 years quite frightening, really, the changes that have occurred. And I, think, I don't think they've helped my generation. Scandal again rocked the industry in the early 1990s, when more than one million people were wrongly advised by their financial advisors to give up company pension schemes in favour of personal pensions. It's made people who would normally be quite careful and cautious and be natural savers to start to ask the question, well, why should I bother? If they're going to be very badly managed and they're going to give me products that don't work or, you know, somebody can run off with the money. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.